Natalie Wilson, co-founder of the Black and Missing Foundation. And hi, I am Derricka Wilson, co-founder of the Black and Missing Foundation. And thank you so much for having us um, to talk about this very important issue that is affecting our community. And I know that we're all dealing with COVID-19. It's a pandemic that's affecting the world. And this is another pandemic that's affecting not only our communities, but the world as well. So let me tell you a little bit about the Black and Missing Foundation. It is a nonprofit organization that brings awareness to missing people of color. And it was started by myself and my sister-in-law, Derica, because we saw an issue. There was a young lady by the name of Tamika Houston who was missing from Derica's hometown of Spartanburg, South Carolina. And we read how her family really struggled to get any type of media coverage. And her aunt, Rebecca, was in media. So it's so ironic, someone in media couldn't get media attention for her missing niece. So we decided to do some research. And at the time, 30% of all people missing were of color. Since the organization formed, that number has grown to 40%. So now 40% of all people missing are of color and that's over 240,000 people missing each year, or reported missing, we, we're sure the number is much higher. So Derek and I decided, why not us? Why should we wait for someone else to help us find us? I am in media relations and Derek is in law enforcement, and those are the two critical professions needed to help us find us. Absolutely. Thanks so much, um, Natalie, for just, you know, letting everyone know about this pandemic. I mean, we all know, but there is a, a crisis happening right here in our own backyards with human trafficking. Um, you know, oftentimes people think that all of this stuff is disappearing, you know, that it no longer exists. But, you know, through this, you know, health pandemic, we're still dealing with missing persons. We're still dealing with human trafficking. Um, and we have to take a stand, and it's all of our responsibility to take a stand. So we have to act now and, and get everyone to join this movement with us because yep. we can no longer allow this to happen on our watch. Absolutely. So there is a silent crisis happening in our neighborhoods and in our communities, and what that is is human trafficking. Um, you know, slavery... Sl I'm sorry, slavery was abolished more than 150 years ago, yet there are more people that are enslaved than any other time during our history. Right. And it's so surprising um, that with this modern day slavery, people don't believe that it's really happening. They're expecting a white van to drive up or be sitting outside, and that's a predator. And I know we're going to talk about online predators shortly, but it's a pandemic that's happening in our backyards, in every single neighborhood in America. And we definitely need to talk to our boys and our girls about this issue. Absolutely. You know, so often we hear from, you know, people that support our organization that this is happening abroad. This is mm -hmm. not happening just abroad. This is happening right here in the United States. In fact, the United States, along with Mexico and the Philippines, was rate the number one, was rate one of the world's worst places uh, for human trafficking in 2018. Wow. And so I'm not surprised. <laughs> neither am I. Neither am I. And and we see this all the time. I mean, look at some of the cases that come to our attention, the cases that we are dealing with. You know, um, one of the cases that really stand out for me is the young lady that went um, missing out of Virginia. She found someone or met someone online. She traveled uh, to New York and she was missing for months, you know, mm -hmm. a mother of four children. And we were able to find her and bring her back home, but she was a victim of human trafficking. Right. And we see so many cases of um, sex, traffic, sex trafficking, um, like the young lady from Baltimore. She was 16 years old. Her mother took her phone away. I mean, her mother did everything right. 
She did not have a phone. She went to school and used a friend's phone and was talking to someone online, gave her information, and the guy came to her school and picked her up and brought her to Maryland and then ultimately DC and she was being trafficked. But you know, it's just so sad, but thankfully because of a vigilant Uber driver who contacted us, we contacted the FBI and she was able to be rescued. But what sticks in my mind the most is that she said there were other girls there that were not rescued. So as parents, we have to talk to our kids and we have to be nosy and know what they're involved in, but it can happen to anyone, any of our children at any time. And we need to have that line of communications open to protect them. Absolutely. And, you know, I think it's important for everyone to know that that person that went missing is not the same person that come back home. You know, right. we see that often. You don't know what they experienced while they were out there, what they had to endure. So we mm -hmm. definitely need to explore other opportunities and resources for, you know, families such as these young men and women that we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Right, absolutely. So the, the statistics are staggering. I mean, you know, 40% of sex trafficking victims, mm -hmm. yet we make up 14, I'm sorry, 13% of the population. But think about even with Black and Missing Foundation. Natalie, when we started it back in 2008, you know, 30% of missing persons in the United States were persons of color, and that number has increased to 40%. Right. And I think the numbers are higher for Hispanics because, you know, there are a number of issues there. There's a language barrier, and then there's the immigration issue. So they aren't speaking up. They aren't going to law enforcement because they believe they could be deported or could be in trouble. So... I just think the numbers are skewed. And again, it's the number of persons that are victims of sex tra trafficking that are reported missing. That there's Absolutely. families that are not reporting it. And oftentimes, Hispanics are actually categorized with the white community as well. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely right. Yeah. Now, labor trafficking is just as high as the sex trafficking. Um, you know, this is that modern day slavery and Hispanic make up an overwhelming number of these cases. Right. And okay. as you stated, it's, it's a little higher than what we actually see. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it. So I know we always talk about the girls. I think it's so important, equally important to, to talk about the boys too. Mm -hmm. You know, there are boys that are being victimized. There are also men that are being victimized. And mm -hmm. you know, when we started the organization back in 2008, there were more missing men than there were women in the United States. Right, right. So we have to protect all of our children. Um, you know, I see so many guys on the corner, they're homeless. And, you know, sometimes I wonder about them. Are they being trafficked? You know, because... Mm -hmm again they need the basics so it affects everyone no one is spared from you know this sex trafficking multi-billion dollar industry so that's that's where we need to start getting rid of the need for these young boys and young girls and women and men um that's that's a start absolutely so we need to uh show our viewers who are at risk what is the at-risk population? What do, what do they look like? Um, yeah, they look like, you know, this young lady looks like someone we know or a neighbor next door, but these kids are running away. And, you know, ultimately, what are they running away from? Is it worse than what they're running away to? Because we know that within 48 hours of running away, um, our young boys and young girls are approached to, um, to be a victim of sex trafficking. So, you know, they need basic items, they need safety, they need food. And they don't know, I mean, by the time that they, they realize what's going on, they can't get out of this life. Yes. And then we, you know, we talk about the homeless. I know you mentioned it a minute ago, but homeless, they are a vulnerable population. 
you know, every time we speak of homeless, the first image that comes to mind is Relisha Rudd. Mm -hmm. You know, she went missing yeah. out of Washington, D.C., and she's still missing. Yes. You know? Yes. And that's one of those cases that I, I look at Relisha, she reminds me so much of my daughter. Mm -hmm. Same age, and um, and we know that our homeless community they're very vulnerable to this. Yes, absolutely, and we know that the pimps and the predators they hang out at the homeless shelters, and they know that these kids again need the basics, and they'll you know lure them with money and safety and new tennis shoes, and these kids are being exploited yet again. Absolutely, absolutely. Then we have the victims of physical and sexual abuse. You know, this really disturbed me, especially in this day and time right now with COVID-19, you know, where children are home, parents are home, working from home, and, mm -hmm. you know, how many are actually being physically abused and sexually abused? Yeah. You know, school is that outlet for a lot of them, um, mm -hmm. you know, for food, their safe haven, and now, now they're home, and, and you're right, you know, why are they running away? So is it bad at home that make them want to go out? And what are they enjoying? Yes, yes. And we need to be vigilant too and, and look at these kids and, you know, the, the counselors before COVID-19, did you notice that a child had a mark on them? Or did you notice a child and you believe that they were being abused? Please check on them please make sure that they're okay because now no one is seeing them. So they may feel really invisible. So if you know that this child has an abusive past, please take the time to check on them. Absolutely, absolutely. And then we have our foster care. That's another vulnerable population. In fact, I know in 2013, 60% of the child victims the FBI recovered were from foster care. Mm -hmm. And in 2017, 14% of the children that were reported missing were likely victims of sex trafficking. And that's all according to the uh, National Center for Missing and Exported Children. Right. Yeah. Mm, we have to do a better job in protecting these children. Um, you know, it's, it's really heartbreaking heartbreaking to, to look into these faces and the, their eyes and these kids are struggling and we, as a community we have to do a better job. It does take a village to look after these kids and to make a difference in their lives. Absolutely and we can't forget about our kidnap population either. You know these children are being kidnapped whether it's by you know someone they know or just a, a random kidnapping, but these kids are vulnerable and could be forced into this underground of human trafficking, which like you stated earlier, is a multi-billion dollar industry mm -hmm. you know, that's happening right here on US soil. Right, right. It's really sad. And I remember um, we were talking about this earlier um, when there was a firestorm in DC when I think it was in 2017, when a, where a number of girls were reported missing, and we went to a town hall meeting, and there was a young woman there who mentioned that she was trafficked by her family. And I just remember the hurt and the tears, and she was just asking for help. You know, and I remember her saying social services turned her away, the school, no one helped her. But it was so alarming to me that she was trafficked by a family member. Yeah, I remember that. Like, yeah. it, was, it was very painful, very painful. And, you know, just to see the tears, you know, streaming down all of these children's faces, you know, wondering if they were going to be, you know, trafficked and abducted. You know, it was very heartbreaking. But again, you know, it takes all of us, it's all of our responsibility to, mm -hmm. you know, take care of our most valuable and precious gem, our, our youth. Right, absolutely, yeah. So we know that one point, between 1 1.6 and 2.8 million children run, run away every year, and as many you know, as 2.8 live on the streets. 
And as you stated earlier, you know, one out of three will be lured into a prostitution within 48 hours of leaving home. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's alarming. So we need to provide them with the resources that they need and, you know, better counseling. Something is definitely going on and we need to be able to have a safe haven for these children to talk about the issues and to know that the streets are not the answer. And I think as parents, you know, we need to have those candid, uncomfortable conversations with our children. We want them to learn from us and, and not mm -hmm. have someone on the street teaching them. You know, it's a time and place for everything. You know, I, I feel that at the dinner table, these conversations can take place. You know, this day and time, everyone is so disconnected because they're they're so, you know, involved in, you know, their devices, you know, rather it's right. their their phones, their tablets, their computers, laptops, you know, we need to leave that technology outside of the dinner table and just, you know, sit there and have those conversations. And we need to listen. We need to listen to our children and not always right. over talk them because they have a lot to say. Right. And another thing with our community, um, you know, we don't want to get involved anymore. Mm -hmm. we want to say, you know what, somebody else will deal with that. But is there a young boy or girl in, in your community that you can mentor? Is there a boy or girl in your community that's hungry, that needs the basics? Just lend a helping hand. Absolutely. Because you're really struggling. Yeah, and, it really is. Yeah, and you know, amongst African American, our young males have the highest rate of suicide. You know, so what is going on in our communities? We really need to protect our children. Mm -hmm. And we need to, you know, not only protect them when they walk out of our front door, we also need to protect them while they're inside our home. You right, know, absolutely. Often ask, how can someone come in and criminalize you inside your home without even walking through your front door? Mm -hmm. And it's these devices, it's the internet service. So we need mm -hmm. to see what's going on, you know, especially right now, this day and time where everyone, again, they're working from home, the kids are spending even more time online because they're doing online schooling, they're trying to connect with their friends right. you know, on all of these different platforms. And we need to be vigilant as parents to see what's going on. Who are they communicating with? What apps are they on? Right. And you know, it's very surprising to me since the pandemic that more and more children, children are disappearing. Um, and we are finding that the predators have an avenue now where they are contacting them online because they know that these children are online. Um, since the pandemic, I have not seen not one missing person reported on the news. So we're so You're focused. Absolutely right pandemic, we're not focusing on any other issue. And, you know, do these kids feel invisible that they're being abused, they're being trafficked, and no one is looking for them? You are absolutely right, Natalie. So. And again, it's no longer just on the street, it's online. They've taken this enterprise online and they go through this whole grooming process. Right. Um, they call it a bunny hunting where, you know, they start befriending you, befriending your people that are in your circle, kind of following mm -hmm. what you're doing on other platforms, looking mm -hmm. at your interests. Then there's the, uh, the instant messages uh, that they start communicating with you on. And then, you know, they ask for a meetup, you know, right. so right. it's that whole grooming process that I don't think people realize. And, and as parents, we need to pay attention to, you know, well, if your child is online and, and, they're, and they're quick to, you know, reduce the, um, the screen when you walk in the room, you know, who are they communicating with? What are they right. showing? Right. Right. And, you know, I've heard young girls meeting someone on Snapchat and a predator and they went to meet that person and disappeared. There's a game called Fortnite that these kids are 
you know, talking to predators and becoming comfortable with them. So there's so many devices that we use and we use it for good, but these predators use it for these horrendous crimes against our children. And I think um, parents need to be mindful when their children are downloading these apps. If these apps do not have an age restriction um, to them where you don't have to do the age verification, parents really need to be mindful of that because if their child can download and create these um, mm -hmm. profiles without having to do age verification, you know that these predators are utilizing those same platforms to lure your children. Right, absolutely. And be, have your child talk to you. So if there's something that's uncomfortable online, have those lines of communications open where they feel comfortable telling you that they don't feel safe. Absolutely, absolutely. So you talked about the recruiters, um, you know, being in the family. I think it's important for us to be able to show our community, you know, besides family members, who are other recruiters out there just so they can be vigilant and, and keep their eyes and ears open. Mm -hmm. Yep, family members, boyfriends, yep, classmates, you're right. Meeting someone at the mall. We hear that all the time. There were the set of twins in Chicago. Yes. That story, they would go to the mall and meet girls and lure them and they were victims of sex trafficking and they were doing this for their dad so how sad is that absolutely and natalie i don't know if you recall um a few years ago we had a case where um there was a, a metro bus and on the outside display it had call 911 yes. um and yeah. so there was a, a a child in prince george's county that was you know, being trafficked and someone mm -hmm. on that bus actually reached out to us and another, you know, vigilant community member reached out to the police yeah, um, to let them know that that person was being recruited and, and yeah. trafficked. Yeah. So you we do have vigilant people in our community. Yeah. You saw the child's picture and, and had that flashing sign call the police. I remember. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Your children's friends. I mean, you don't know who these kids are. Yeah. And I think, you know, nowadays, you know, parents don't take the time to get to know the parents of these friends. Mm -hmm. I know when I was growing up, my parents would not allow me to go over any of my friends' house until they actually met, you know, mm -hmm. my friends' parents. Because you don't know what, what those conditions are. You don't right. know anything about them. And, and you know, if someone is in, in my home, of course, I want to be able to know who those parents are if I need to get in contact. And, and that's mm -hmm. how my parents were when I was growing up, too. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And as we said, this issue is happening in our backyards. It's happening all over the United States. But there are some areas that are, it's happening more so than ever. Um, California, Texas, Georgia. I know Atlanta has a, ooh, it's a huge hub for sex trafficking. Absolutely. Um, Florida. Florida as well. Yeah, Maryland. Yes, right yeah. here in our backyard, Maryland. Yes, yes. So it's all over the country, but there's certain hot pockets where it's happening, or at least it's being reported more so than other places. If she's hungry, she'll do whatever it takes. Yeah. You know, minority children are the most vulnerable to be trafficked for a variety of environmental factors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Poverty, drugs. Ooh, so sad. Within 48 hours of a child going missing, one in three are solicited for sex. Wow. How alarming. And oftentimes when children are kidnapped or run away, their stories go unreported and receive the least public attention and community support. And you and I, we know that all too well, which is why we started the organization 12 years ago. Right, right. And we know that oftentimes law enforcement, they do not take the case seriously. 
and they classify our children as a runaway. So if you're classified as a runaway, you do not receive the Amber Alert or any type of media coverage. And awareness is key. So with our organization, we, it, it doesn't matter to us if you ran away or if you, you know, were taken or abducted, we treat the case the same because we need to find you and bring you home and get you out of that environment. Absolutely. In our organization, we do not just cover children. We also make sure that we're covering our men and our women as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I think back on um, even the this Anthony Sowell case in Cleveland, Ohio, how those 11 women, they were all reported missing, yet law enforcement decided not to take those cases seriously. Right. And these women were all found buried in and around his property. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that's just so heartbreaking because our lives matter. Absolutely. And you know, our community, we have a responsibility as well. We tend to look the other way and say, you know what, Some, someone else will report that. Or there's a sense of distrust with the minority community and law enforcement. We understand that. But this could be your mother, your father, your grandparents, your children, or your child that's missing. And you would want someone to stand up and speak out to help you find your child or to stop something from happening. So we have to be more proactive instead of reactive in our community. Absolutely. And I'm sure all of the viewers now, they're trying to figure out, well, how can I help? Well, guess what? We're going to tell you exactly how you can help. First yeah. and foremost, we want you to reach out to your elected leaders. We need to change laws to protect our children. We need to change laws to make sure that the victims of human trafficking are not being criminalized. Right. Yes, because we know that oftentimes the children, not the predators, are the ones um, that are arrested and they have a record and they don't have the resources to get help. And many times these kids age out of the system. Yes. So they really don't have any protection or help at all. Absolutely, absolutely. So we definitely need to make sure that the victims are receiving our support and not being criminalized. And as you stated, you know, even with our organization, you know, there is a lack of trust when it comes to law enforcement and the minority community. So if someone that you know um, is missing and you have a tip, you have information that can lead us to them. You know, we have an anonymous tip line. You can call our number 877-97-BAM-5 or you can go right on our website and you can hit the uh, anonymous tip report and send it electronically that way. We're not trying to compromise your identity. We just want to find that person. Right. And all it takes is one person one person that can make a difference. They may have seen something, they may have heard something, and they can come forward to provide closure for the families or to save a life. So if you see something, please speak up and say something. Absolutely, and if you or someone you know is a victim of human trafficking, we encourage you to call the Human Trafficking Hotline at 888-373-7888. Again, I'm Derricka Wilson with the Black and Missing Foundation. And I'm Natalie Wilson with the Black and Missing Foundation. And we are available to assist. If we don't have the resources readily available, we have partners that we can get you or your family, your loved one, um, counseling or the services that you need. But we wouldn't know that if, unless you contact us. And we look like you because we want to help you. We know that there's an issue in our community and we will not stop searching for all of our missing. And we will give it our best effort. We are giving it everything that we can and we will not stop searching for you. Absolutely. And with that said, you know, we would like to give a special thanks to Councilwoman uh, Monique Anderson Walker in collaboration with the Ayanna J. McAllister Legacy Foundation, the Fort Washington Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta, 
and the super chapter for putting on this wonderful community safety forum to be able to educate our community on personal safety. We really appreciate you joining us for this human trafficking workshop. And we encourage each and every one of you all to stay safe and be strong. And we will get through this together. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Yes, thank you. And again, be safe and please help us find us. Mm -hmm.